Big 703. We will call the meeting to honor January, yeah, February 20th, 2018, Planning Board. Pleasure, please. Pleasure, please. Pleasure, please. Pleasure, please. Pleasure, please. Pleasure, please. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Oh, call, please. Steve McConaughey? Yeah. Like St. Jean absent. And Martin absent. Janata. Here. Mr. Gillette is absent. Dennis? Here. Roy? Here. Honey. Here. Okay. Minutes of January 16th. Make a motion we approve A motion to move approve. Second. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Satisfied conditions. Other than the file letter from Adam for Chambers, there is no other ones as far as I know. Still waiting quite a few. Valley Point being the biggest. He did. I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> I was prepping up. Oh, okay, Jim. <laughs> well, you're up. Free application? Yes, sir. Informal discussion? Yes. Non binding on either part. So, uh, the purpose of tonight's meeting is just to get a little guidance from the uh, board before uh, we come in with a formal application. You know. And uh, this is uh, the Hodgson Farm, and I'm just going to get over here on this side so I can point without giving anybody cataract surgery. So this is Hodgson Farm here, the uh, John Deere dealership, the furniture store, and Northern Tires across the street. And uh, so uh, Chip and Tina Maxfield under Maxfield Holding have been trying to sell this property for uh, a little bit and without uh, much success due to the size of the land. And the leach field for the, for the uh, building is here. So what they would like to do is subdivide off four or five acres uh, with a boundary line here. Um, back in, oh, I don't know, around 2000, or so we cut off about two acres out of here and adjusted it onto an abutting lot owner. Um, but there's a condition on the plan right here that says that uh, any further subdivision beyond three lots will require the 50 foot right of way be built to town roads, uh, Ossipi road standards. Uh, so I couldn't tell from this note whether that meant if you do any, any further subdivision creating more than three lots, if you were going to uh, require that this right-of-way be built to town standards. Uh, I asked Laura to uh, look for the minutes, and she found those and gave those to me uh, this evening. And the minutes are fairly clear. It says any further subdivision of lot one, which is this lot, 
uh, requires uh, the construction of this road to uh, up to town standards. So the, the question I have that is sort of twofold. Um, one, I'm wondering if we were to do a subdivision and, and uh, put a restriction that this lot could not be developed until that road was built uh, is one question. The other is technically they get two tax bills. They're taxed on this right of way and they're taxed on this parcel. So not, not trying to be cute, but technically it would be a boundary line adjustment and not a subdivision mm -hmm. if the, the line were adjusted <laughs> so that rather than having the lot be shaped like this, it, it came in and went over like that. Well, uh, first thing, Jim, that road does not go to the length that that's supposed to be on that plan. Oh, absolutely not. There, there's no, there is, the, the road just comes into about here, Connie. Right. And it's, there's no cul-de-sac or anything. Mm -hmm. No. So it, it was never, you know, it's, it's basically just a driveway yeah. now. It, it's built in that right-of-way, and I believe that the first, you know, that, that amount that was built was built to the width and, and standards of, of the uh, town roads, but it, it obviously hasn't gone the full length. There's a separate deed for that right away? Well, the, the problem is, uh, Roy, when you, so the, the original developers, they created a, a single deed, okay? Well, you, you tell you, you're telling you tax for the right away separate from the land. Right. You got a single deed. Yeah, but it's oftentimes you'll get multiple tracts of land in a in a single deed. Mm -hmm. So the the original developer had this whole thing created three lots on the right of way, then they sold lot two, then they sold lot three, and then they sold lot one and the right of way as mm -hmm. two separate tracts to uh, Maxfield. Yeah, but you're saying sold two separate tracts was one deed. It's still one track legally. No, no, legally it's two. Uh, and that's why they get two tax bills. It would be just like if I sold you a lot today and next year I sold you another lot and then you sold it to Tim three years down the road and you put both parcels on one deed, he still gets two lots. It's just on a single yeah, deed. Yeah, as long as it wasn't a boundary line adjustment. Right, there were no boundary line adjustments. Right. This well, is there's no boundary line adjustments. The right of way, it's still one deed. It's one deed, no, but, you it's, one deed, but it's two parcels. Okay, there, there's that. a meets and bounds description of lot one, which does not include yeah, the right of way. My, my point is, you're splitting hairs on what you were just saying earlier about two parcels or the, or the subdivision, where the road has to be done or not. Right. I, what I'm saying is, is another you know, option, which I said would, would be to do a boundary line adjustment be, so that the right of way basically became part of the 30 roughly 30 acres that's remaining. Well, you'd have to create two separate deeds to do that. Well, once it was conveyed, you'd, you would create, that, the deeds don't get created as soon as you do a subdivision. They don't get created until you actually convey the parcel. Right. So just like, for instance, Winsock Village, Danny Hayford had a 100 acre tract of land. He didn't, he didn't write 48 deeds as soon as that was subdivided. He wrote a deed every time he sold a piece of property, and that's the way that would work. That would make sense. To, you wouldn't have to do a boundary line adjustment every time he did that. No, no. Once once it's been subdivided and approved by the town, then then you they have the right to convey, you know, write a new deed for every single parcel. Well, the only thing I say, Jim, is you have on your. On the map, you have four lots, except it says in the minutes it's changed to three lots. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I recognize that. I think the original subdivision, we didn't do it, but I think the I original subdivision was a four-lot subdivision, and they reduced it to three. Right. Mm -hmm. It said, it says. Protect himself with the right away if I build it, maybe. Peak Associates, four lots, Route 16, Ossipi. Plan change to three lots. Conditional approval upon note on the plan regarding total lot size 
be moved or removed altogether and a note stating that the 50 foot right of way be built if any further subdivision of lot one be proposed. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I'm saying you got four lots, they say three. So <laughs> well, it's, it's confusing. Yeah. So the so I mean it, so basically that you know that's the minutes which I didn't get till today, but the, the note on the plan is says says any further subdivision beyond three lots doesn't say these three lots will require the 50-foot right-of-way to be built to the town of Ossipi Road specifications. So it's, you know, the minutes are, are, are you know, significantly different than, than the note on the plan. And I, you know, so I... It, well, no, the, the plan has only three lots. Right. Yes, lots one, two, three, and the, right, right. And the proposed right-of-way, it says. Currently, Jim, the right of way though exists as part of lot one. Yep. It, it's the, the so the deeds, the the Maxfields got two parcels of land. The the deed describes parcel one, in its a meets and bounds description all the way, and then it describes parcel two, and it describes the meets and bounds of the right of way all the way around. Okay. But as as a by definition a lot, it's all one lot. Or, or is it? I mean, no. It's. I mean, it's technically, legally, legally, they could convey that that 50 foot right of way to you or to me. Oh, so as it technically, is, it's a separate lot. Yeah, I mean, you okay. couldn't build on it because. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But but it it could be conveyed to a third party today. Yeah, sure. It's always a right of way. Right, right. I understand. Is the the gravel pit been reclaimed? Yes. That's in the minutes. I, I actually, I think it's in the sep. We didn't give them to you, but it's in the September eighth, yes. two thousand and I mean uh, nineteen eighty-eight, where Peter Earl uh, for Peak Associates submitted uh, photographs of the reclaimed gravel pit, and yeah, that was that was in this area right here. Yeah. So as I said, what 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 they really would like to do is to just subdivide off enough land to keep the septic system and the uh, the farmhouse to see if that will entice buyers and uh, they would put a you know a restriction that uh, the remaining land could not be redeveloped until that road was built how large is that proposed front lot in, this, in the proposed subdivision? Uh, it would probably be between four and five acres okay. in order to keep the leach field on because mm -hmm. it's a pretty good sized leach field that's sitting out in here. So it's <laughs> okay. sitting about in this area. So, so by the time you strike a, a boundary line north-south from the right-of-way to the northerly boundary line and, <coughs> and uh, keep a, an appropriate distance from the septic system, uh, it would be it would be between four and five acres. How big is the cellar lot going to be if it's done? Uh, the remaining the remaining land would be uh, let's see twenty five acres or so. Give yeah, it, it would be let's see thirty one minus uh, minus two is twenty eight and minus yeah it'd be twenty four or five acres. Something like that. So what would be the plan if one this person bought that if we did this and they decided they want to build their own house on that land? Like this. Is they still be required to build a town road. If you put that for a condition on it. Yeah. It's a condition already. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. It's yeah, already a condition. Right, there, there is a condition now that it has to be. Yeah, and so, that, I mean, we have no choice in the matter. I thought plan of work to change conditions. No. But yeah, I mean, you can't the change the conditions of that plan, right. but, but a future plan you could, you know, if we came in with a new proposal, like I'm asking about, then you've got a, an opportunity to put, you know, conditions so you could have a different conditions, uh, such as, all right, well, you can because there's no new use, we'll allow you to to do that. But you can't. Nothing can be built on that remaining land until uh, you build that road to town standards. I mean that that is an option. To to provide access to the back lot. To to provide to yeah, to provide back lots. Now, my only question: somebody just wanted to build a house and buy it after the farm sold. Let's say if this what this goes through. Mm -hmm. Why would they be? 
what would they have to do to come in to not to build the road if they just want to put their own house there? Why, why would they need a 50 foot right away for one house? I'm just wondering what Well, it, it would be, it, I mean, this, this, this right of way would provide frontage to this remaining land. Mm -hmm. if, if they want to develop it. Well, it still provides frontage whether they develop it. If, if they just put a driveway, yeah. or, I mean, you could put a condition it, that they had to build it to town standards if it was anything beyond a single family home. Mm -hmm. a, a, a single, single family home. I mean, there's. I was saying, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing it put if, if somebody bought the whole thing just for their own right. use that, that, in one house. I hate to see them have to put a whole road in to do that. That's pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. I, I, I hate to see someone get stuck with that if it's possible to, to well, change the plans I got for you to do it. Well, if someone buys the entire parcel, they, they're not bound by the requirement for putting the, the right of way in because they own the whole parcel. It's only when they subdivide, correct? Well, no, 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 not the way it's no. no if, if I did a boundary line adjustment, that would be the case. So, okay. so, in other words, if we did a boundary line adjustment so that the right of way basically was part of this 24 I acres. Then, then that would be something completely different. Okay. Then they wouldn't have to build a road if they just build a house, right? Well, On their own. Yeah. no, this is a commercial right away. Yep. Which changes it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a right of way. Some people like throwing a lot of land, all the same. Right. You know. Yep. Well, this is, some that's commercially zoned. Yeah, I think it is. That's commercially zoned. Yes. Part of it's commercial easement. Yeah, it's, like yeah, it's o only part of it, Dennis, is commercial yeah, zone. The I'm back, that's the reason back. Why yeah, the, there. the back part is the back part is rural. No, 200 feet, Jim, I think, isn't it? Uh, I'd have to look at a zone. I'd have map. to look at I thought, I thought, I thought we changed that last year. No, the only one that came in was Evans. It's uh, 500, 500 feet. Along 16. Uh, from from the right of way, so 500 feet deep. This this road is about a thousand feet deep. So the the commercial is somewhere through here. Commercial is all the way to the back with the with the. Uh, yeah, I guess guess I misremember. I thought I thought we get the zoning change for the size of the lot. The, well, you may, maybe the, the zoning map is showing it as 500 feet. Now, if you've got if you've made a modification to. 906 feet back, because Osgoods uses the whole back of that. Well, they may, but they, they do. Uh, I'm, no, I'm saying they may, but it's not by the map. It's not zoned no. for commercial all the way back there. I, th I thought I thought we did an adjustment last year. Town meeting or something. No, we didn't. It was talked about, I guess. I guess, I guess Jim, we'd have to see what you proposed. Well, it, it depends on where you And how you would treat mm -hmm. the remaining land. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so, conception, I mean... Uh, conceptually, I agree with it. Conceptually, okay, so if we, if we showed something, I mean, the, uh, if we showed you something and with a sort of a restriction on the remaining land and just make an application and have you folks consider it? Is that mm -hmm. the direction I'm... I know it's non-binding on either of us, but I'm you know, just trying um, to get a sense. You're saying that you want to go for a boundary line adjustment. Well, I'm, I'm happy to do a subdivision if that's the preference. I just, I just want to understand... Yeah, uh, I understand what you want. Um, can I just comment? It feels like as the owner of the property, it's kind of ridiculous to have that kind of condition, unless it's going to prevent me from further subdivision. Everything, oh, everything is in place as it is. It's not going to change anything that's going on on the property. Right. I understand that, Mr. Maxfield, but. We've got to go by this plan that was approved back in 88 mm -hmm. to start sense. with. So the minute, say you cut off and back of where the office is and go straight across, 
you're going to get your lead field, et cetera, et cetera. So that's going to leave you 25 acres with no roadway at the present time because the road does not go beyond your driveway into chambers. I believe you pick up a sufficient amount of road, road surface on 16 itself. Well, he's talking about the back portion now. No, the back portion. Yeah. You have enough frontage to make a separate lot of record. You have 400 and some odd feet on the front. And that's... 405. Uh, I, think that's, I think it's 201 acre, isn't it? I have a question. What do you think the maker's purpose was in doing this, to make the planning board happy, or <laughs> at the time, probably because we weren't here at that time. Well, my guess is it's also possible they were considering the, the possibility that this parcel, this 30-acre parcel, would be subdivided, and with that in mind, there would be access at the cul-de-sac for each of the parcels. I mean, you could probably get you know, four or five lots in there and to have that, that right away with the cul-de-sac would give you future access to all those parcels if it were subdivided. Yeah. That would be that would be a good guess. Yeah. At that time yeah. we did yeah. this, it's just for the what building acre, yeah. not to collapse. So you got enough acres. Yeah, yeah. yeah. probably thought we'd get built right away. It seems to me if we collapsed what, two thousand two or two thousand three, everything went down in two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it was uh Someone could uh, use that land either commercially up forward or mm -hmm. they could argue that they wanted to leave a one enough right away to have a commercial right away. Mm -hmm. I think the property line adjustment is legal, so we probably ought to do, but I guess I guess if someone owns everything, I don't quite understand what they would have. What did we do on Windy Pond? Did we do a subdivision or a boundary line? Yeah, the boundary line, wasn't it? So so that, that was a subdivision. Yeah, yeah, that was a subdivision. That's what they thought. That was a subdivision. And that's why, that's why I think yeah. this should be a subdivision, Absolutely. not a boundary line. I, I tend to agree with so that. So, I, I mean, we could, we could do, we could do a... Uh, come in with a proposed subdivision and say that the remaining land can't be sold unless it's sold with the right-of-way. and to put a condition on if they develop that anything more than a single family home they'll have to build the road to provide access to the additional right. lot or lots in the back right right yep and i i agree connie i, I think that's the does right, the right deed direction to go. we have to go by the deed too yep mm -hmm. does the deed say anything about the remaining land no 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 okay well, I mean, I would go with a subdivision, Jim. All right, then we'll we'll propose a subdivision. I'll put some restrictions on it. I'll bring a copy of the deed so you can see that. Yeah. And yeah. Well, subdivision, we can actually rewrite this one a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe okay. a thing to do so single house would be safe and any more. All right. Is that satisfactory, Mr. Axfield? So long as my future rights to make use of that back land, providing I provide all the things the town requires. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. should protect yeah, it quite you, well. Yeah. Protect you, any buyers whether they want to build one house or something like it. Right. It's taken care of both ways for mm -hmm. you. Right. That way some poor guy would have to put a 50 foot right away in the whole lane if he just wants to build his own house. Right now you'd have to. I'm not sure what obligation we have to the, uh, the better. Uh, I will just have to check the deed. I don't think I don't know that there's one, but we can find that out. Yeah, we don't have any immediate plans except to sell the building. Mm -hmm. oh, that's all right. No, well, we just trying to help as best we can here because our hands are tied. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you all for coming in. Pleasure to meet you. I got you too. I don't know why they want to put the building. Yeah, I'm going to do it.
I'd like to say they can only go back to commercial, so they probably just send it in. I do. Who are we getting for a I do too. Wait. Sorry, Tony. We have a bill to say, girl. The total is $1,645. Uh, We've already paid him $945, so that leaves us $700. Make a motion that we approve the payment. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Scott, you're up. I think it's four for four. Four people for four? Yeah. Scott, you understand we have four people, which is four. If you so desire, you can come back later when we have six. But it's up to you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think we'll go forward with, uh, mm -hmm. with the board we have tonight and uh, discuss the project and see how we go. Okay. How it, how it Very tomorrow. good. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the planning board. My name is Scott Lawler. I'm from Norway Plains uh, Associates. I'm a civil engineer on the project. Uh, with me here tonight is Mr. John Pearson, who is one of the co owners of uh, 1314 Route 16 LLC. Um, I know Jim was uh, pretty expert with the uh, with a laser pointer, but uh, I'm kind of a more of a, uh, a guy that stands up by the board and sort of points towards it. That's all right with the board. Um, I got more sheets and flipping back and forth. And I think it's easier that way. Um, great, thank you. Um, so again, uh, we're here on behalf of uh, 1314 New Hampshire Route 16 LLC and uh, Route 16 self-storage facility. Uh, the parcel is located at 1300 White Mountain Highway. It is tax map 99, lot 22. Uh, it's located on the east side of the White Mountain Highway. Um, and uh, to the north is um, map uh, 99, lot 21, which is also owned by the applicant, uh, as well as lot 20. Uh, Essentially, uh, the applicant bought all three parcels from Mr. Kirby back in October of this year. So we're about to say. So, Steve Variety across you can. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Let me give you the overall, and then we can go into more details. But yes, absolutely right, Mr. Chairman. Across the street is Deer Can. We've got uh, a commercial hairdresser to the south. Um, we've got the three parcels um, the applicant has purchased. There's some residential homes off of Arrowhead Drive on the, uh, on the uh, east of the project. Um, so again, they have all currently own all three lots. They're looking to develop the lower lot. So we flip back to um, the existing features plan. Again, uh, this is approximately two acre uh, piece of property located in the roadside commercial district, which uh, again is at uh, 200 feet front, it is one acre lot minimum. Uh, this parcel uh, was currently de or previously developed as a, uh, like a storage facility for Fairpoint Communications back in around 2013. Uh, there's a fenced in area with, uh, it's all stoned in and they, they housed uh, telephone poles and utility trailers. There's also a remnant of a uh, cap foundation in the back at some point. It was a house. Was, was there a house? Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was a house that burnt down or just got to a cap foundation, but there was a house there and, and that remnant uh, foundation still there and kind of in disrepair. Uh, in generally speaking, the, uh, the land has been disturbed, uh, brushy, that type of uh, outfit. Uh, we did uh, have the uh, wetland scientist Barry Keith from BH Keith Associates take a look at the site to see if there are any jurisdictional wetlands. And he actually did find a small finger of wetlands 
uh, that's essentially man-made. It's in the ditch line mm -hmm. on the south side of the stone pad that was created for um, for the Fairpoint uh, project. So we've denoted that uh, jurisdictional wetlands along the edge there. I remember correctly, that was actually put in for drainage. It was, mm -hmm. it was, yeah. it was. That's why I say yeah. it was man-made. I think they just got a little bit over I was here when they did that. Yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's man-made. Then there's a, there's a ditch line on both sides, and essentially the water comes to the back. And, uh, and we did a, did a test pit out the back here, and there's really good soils uh, to allow for that infiltration. Um, I you know I didn't find any uh, evidence of any wells or septics that might have been supported for this house, but um, it, there very well could be. Uh, there, there's actually a, a six-inch water main that's located out on the. Uh, on White Mountain Highway, and there's a hydrant right here at the uh, near our property corner. Um, again, the total that lot was, that yeah. was put in after that house burned. Oh, it, <laughs> <laughs> I guess a good reason for it. <laughs> <laughs> a little white but yeah, That's right. <laughs> so, uh, so generally speaking, uh, the lot lights go through uh, some uh, evolutions over the over the years, and uh, currently in its current state, it's about 28 percent. Uh, Pervious coverage that again is the foundation, the driveway to it, and this big gravel pad and, and there. Uh, and uh, the purpose of that number will come up here shortly. The zoning requires 40% uh, uh, total lot coverage. So um, I'm going to flip over the page here and kind of go to the more detailed proposed site plan. At this point, Mr. Chairman, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to pass out. Revised uh, smaller plans. Um, we have them. Uh, nope, nope, revised ones. I got oh. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and again, the, the reason for the reason for the small revised plans will come out here shortly. Scott, are these the large ones up to date? Or? No, no. They, we, I would say literally hot off the presses, but uh, these days uh, they're uh, they're. Manufactured by the Xerox machine. I do have two large size of this plan set if, if somebody has a difficulty reading the smaller sets. So, um, so again, the applicant is looking to propose approximately 15,400 15, square feet of self storage facilities in these two locations. Uh, we've got two buildings. Uh, the first building is 40 feet wide by 250 feet long. The second building is 20 feet wide, um, but it's 270 feet long. We've got uh, a paved uh, surface that goes around it um, with the access to the proposed buildings from uh, the north from his adjoining lot. Again, he owns all three lots. This is the adjoining lot here. The, the, uh, the focus of the reason we've re submitted revised plans is a, a direct relationship to a, a meeting we had with the Department of Transportation on Wednesday. Um, we, we submitted a full application for a driveway permit for this property, and that's what the plans that was presented to the planning board uh, earlier uh, this month. Uh, we submitted an application to DOT. A little bit of historic uh, uh, for the board's uh, pleasure is basically when the applicant bought all three lots, he had communications and discussions with the owner, Mr. Kirby, who led led him to believe that uh, he would be entitled to having, you know, to have three driveways, one driveway for each three of his lots. Um, the applicant then had some informal discussions with the Department of Transportation this past summer, and it wasn't as quite as clear uh, to the applicant whether or not he would, in fact, have three driveway permits or only. Uh, or, or less. So we went ahead and designed it based upon the three driveways and with the main driveway coming off of Route 16 in that location and had it all designed and submitted to your, for your board. Uh, we submitted the application to the district. They reviewed it, had us call us, called us in and had a meeting on Wednesday, to which point we were uh, basically told by the Department of Transportation that they would not grant three driveway permits for the three lots. This all stems back to the golden January 1st, or excuse me, July 1st, 1971 rule that if you've got over 300, over 500 feet of frontage, you're entitled to three curb cuts. If you have less than 500 feet of frontage at that date, you're only entitled to two curb cuts. The total parcel prior to 71 
uh, was about 1,200 uh, linear feet, starts down by White Mountain Survey mm -hmm. and comes all the way to the north end of our third lot. Um, and over the course of years, there have been several subdivisions and lot line revisions and such that there's now six lots. So um, <laughs> district has, uh, has uh, taken this time to enforce their driveway permits allowed. In 2013, when Mr. Kirby came in front of the planning board to do this gravel area for Fairpoint, he did submit a driveway permit to District 3, at which point District 3 approved it, but re made it a requirement that one of the other two lot driveways have to be closed. Uh, that was a condition uh, Mr. apparently Mr. Kirby agreed to, he, but he never went through and followed through. So essentially he's been had three driveways since 2013 and uh, much to the chagrin of District 3 and DOT. So now that we have to come back through District 3 for a new application, they're taking a more stern approach and have uh, you know, indicated that they would not approve a new driveway that they would only allow two driveways, it was up to the discretion of the applicant how he chooses to do that, whether he keeps the proposed driveway as we submitted the plans and terminate one of the other two driveways or to um, um, go with the, uh, the new location. We just probably should have flipped over. So this sheet in describing it, so again, we've got a, a driveway access here that entrance that provides access to basically the middle lot in the northern lot they've got this driveway here which provides access to their storage sheds in the m m deli and then the third access was proposed here and that's now what district three is saying uh, they'll allow a driveway here but we're going to have to terminate one of the other two so uh, literally hot off the presses after communications with the applicant uh, we've revised the plans uh, that we presented in front of you to terminate or remove the proposed driveway off the side there, off Route 16, and provide access um, through the middle. Um, I, it's, uh, again, my apologies to the board for the lateness of so many of these plans, um, yeah, but uh, that was the change uh, that resulted in the Tuesday strip. I had a rather fun. Because you're on all three lots, you can only have two driveways. Well, it goes back to again. Someone else would buy that total amount of frontage. Yeah, it goes back to the total amount of frontage based upon that July '71, and uh, and the fact that they have jurisdiction. <laughs> and, uh, um, I think we, we can go around this uh, a couple times. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, the plans that we're presenting tonight show the driveway location here and not on here. Uh, to keep going forward on the proposal. So we've got two buildings, 15,400 square feet, um, a paved surface around it. Um, we're proposing some arbor bivies along the uh, Route 16 uh, to provide a little bit of screening to break it up. We're also proposing a five foot high chain link fence along the uh, sort of the prevent access immediately off the highway. Uh, and at the new entrance here, we're going to have a automated gate uh, with, a, with a punch key pad code to get inside the facility. Um, we've uh, provided um, uh, lighting analysis uh, for, for uh, LED wall-mounted wall packs that are downward shielded, meaning dark sky friendly. Uh, there's a, there's a, some on both buildings, and we also have a single pole-mounted light in this location here to provide access uh, through the front gate. Um, so the total, the total uh, impervious coverage based upon this build out is approximately 39%, which is less than the 40% that's allowed by the zoning uh, ordinance. The, um, to provide uh, stormwater management um, in, in dealing with the stormwater, we've designed a, a system of Sheet, sheeting the, the stormwater down in between the two buildings to a sediment four bag. Uh, once the sediment four bag fills up, it flows into a bioretention uh, basin here that provides a uh, two foot high thick media uh, of amended soils for the stormwater to percolate through. We 
before getting into the groundwater. We've designed uh, this basin to handle uh, the frequent storm events up through like a 10 year storm event. There's a small outlet structure here with a stone, uh, with a pipe that discharges back on their property for uh, the, the flows of less frequent storm events like the 25 year or the 50 year storm event. Um, to uh, prevent storm water from getting into the uh, wetlands, essentially the roof, uh, the, both roofs are single pitched and they both pitch towards the south, which, which is good so they can get that snow melt coming off it. So the, the snow, the uh, melt or rainwater that's coming off the smaller building comes down into a, a drip line, a drip, stone drip edge, which then discharges into the basin. The middle building, the bigger building sheets into the middle and it, there's going to be a paved gutter that discharges it into the, uh, the stormwater management system. Um, this facility is not going to be manned. Um, as such, we are not proposing any septic system, water, domestic water supply, or, um, or parking. We've submitted waivers uh, to the planning board for those three items. Again, it's not being manned, um, and so we don't feel that uh, this really needs uh, those, those amenities. Um, we've also submitted a waiver um, to the planning board um, Fourth waiver was for, oh, I'm sorry, the fourth waiver was for uh, the, the need for a dumpster. Mm -hmm. um, it's been our experience with uh, storage sheds and storage facilities like that. If you have a dumpster, people are going to throw a lot of unwasted and it puts a burden on the uh, applicant. So if you don't have a dumpster on site, then they, they generally have to take, take away their, their trash. Um, as part of this plan, um, we've submitted it to uh, the Santa Rosa Bay Fire Department. Uh, it was reviewed by Chief uh, Cullen. Uh, the plan that he revived, reviewed was the original one that was submitted to the planning board that had the access here. Uh, Mr. Uh, the Chief did not have any issues with it. His only comment was, was that uh, if there was going to have a gate, that he would need an access code or a key for it. We put a note on the site plans indicating that uh, a key will be provided or access code will be provided to the center fire, center philosophy fire department. Um, this this new layout uh, we can revise, uh, we can submit those plans to the chief for his uh, his purview, but uh, um, I don't envision uh, that he will have an issue with the circulation because generally the circulation has changed. It's just whether it's coming on the side or coming in. The, um, security wise, are you going to have cameras? Gonna yes. 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 Okay. So you, you can see if someone is doing damage or leaving. Correct. And you know who to go to. That's correct. Yes. Um, along with the uh, waivers, we did submit an application for a special use permit. Uh, special use permits required for when you uh, impact or develop a property that's within the water. Uh, resource protection district, which this is, uh, and if you render the lot more than 20% of previous coverage, um, it's uh, a special use permit application has been submitted with a narrative, uh, and uh, my understanding of it was that uh, a special use could be granted by the planning board if a detailed engineer set of plans for the stormwater management <coughs> system be provided uh, as part of its uh, application, which we did submit for the with our packet. Um, again, we're, we've uh, come up with a really good stormwater management system. We're capturing 100% of the impervious coverage from this development area here, sending it to um, a sediment floor bank, get those uh, sands to settle out and the fines, and then overflows into a stormwater management uh, bioretention uh, system. Uh, we put a note on the plan and a sign to be installed at requires the no salt be used uh, for winterization. Um, so again, that's another uh, key element to uh, preserving the, uh, the water resources. Uh, and a full detailed uh, stormwater inspection and maintenance manual was prepared as part of the packet we submitted. Um, and a copy will be brought into the owner uh, at that time. Uh, there are no other state permits required. Again, we're not doing a septic system. There's no public water supply. Uh, the area disturbance is less than 100,000 square feet that tr typically triggers the alteration of train bureau uh, and 
we will need to submit a change of use or an expansion of use driveway permit back to DOT, even though we're not proposing a driveway here because we're adding this uh, structure here to uh, that vehicles will be in turning in and out of. We will have to submit a new application to district uh, when we had the communications with them on, um, on Wednesday. They had no problems with issuing it. The only thing they did ask is that the northernmost entrance uh, was to narrow the throat down. Currently, it's about 75 to 80 feet wide, open and throat. And the district uh, would like that to be shrunk a little bit more than what that is. Um, so we'll be working with the district on submitting uh, a revised driveway permit for essentially the three lots. One driveway permit will be issued. We'll have two driveways, basically the existing two driveways, just with modification to the most northern driveway permit. Uh, and lastly, um, before I ask answer questions, um, is that the, uh, there are no federal permits outside of the EPA's construction general permit, which is anytime you disturb more than one acre, uh, you, you file that. And that's a typically a filed by the site contractor and the owner. Uh, Two weeks before the start of construction. Um, there are more detailed plans in here. I've got the erosion sedimentation control plans, I've got the lighting plans, all of which have been updated and part of your uh, packets. Um, at this point, uh, I think I've probably rambled on for quite a while, so um, if uh, the uh, board has questions that either I or Mr. Pearson would answer, could answer, we'll probably do so. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Um, may I? Yes. Um, snow removal. Yes. So we, we indicated on the uh, on sheet C2, the site plan, okay. but essentially it's located along this edge, this edge, and basically the end. So as you know, as you can envision, they're going to come in and they're basically going to push the snow down to this end, okay. which is where the sediments uh, right. four bay is. So it'll get loaded with snow in, in the wintertime. Yeah. Okay. And that way, when it melts, it's right there, and, and it's very accessible. Uh, for clean outs. Okay. Thank you. Everyone else? I will open it to Mr. Coldberry because I know he wants to talk. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know who was going to be here tonight, but that's all right. Uh, I have a number of problems. First of all, the Think about having no water. True, nobody's going to be there. But have you ever seen a storage unit when it catches fire? You don't have any fire suppression system. That's number one. You're right next to wooded areas and homes. That goes up. My house is probably going to go too. Number two your light for your gate. You show it on the back edge southeast side of your property. That light's going to come through my windows at night. I do not need light. I've got, I, I have my own lights up. They're motion detectors. So it lights up whenever you, everybody comes up my driveway. You also mentioned the drainage. There is a, well, I'll probably say 60 degree grade hill right behind your property, between my house and your property. The water has been draining down in there without a suppression system or a water recycling system. And it comes over and has built a gully right down the property lines, which you now own, according to what I was told nobody could own that property because it was storm drains. It was for storm drains. I've been maintaining the front end of that on Arrowhead Drive where you got a six foot pipe that sits up eight feet off the ground, the top edge. Are you gonna ensure that you're not gonna send that water down there? and flood the property like it was four years ago after I've cleared all the debris out of there. You have a five foot chain link fence. What the hell do you need a security system for? 
I can jump over that. And then, I guess the best of it all is the, uh, why you would want to build storage units on property that's adjacent to two other storage units that were up for sale for three years. You say you own all that property now, all the way from our, where White Mountain RV used to be, all the way over to the, the, the lady that cuts the shears. Well, you got another problem there if you own that property. You have to allow access to the cemetery that's there, which you did not state there was one on your map. There's a cemetery behind Dolores' house, which is my next door neighbor. So your surveyors can go take another look at what they got. I never did find that big rock pile you got on there. Can I ask? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, what else? Um, you had a note that you would be grading the land the, away from Route 16 yeah. and toward the back of your property. Yeah. And you've got your, your little thing there. You can guarantee that it's not going to come down on ours? That's what I just... That's what I just asked. That's, yeah. Your little water storage thing there, okay? I'm more basic. It's going to go either way. Either way, it's going to go on one side of my property or the other. Okay, yeah, product again. Sure, sure. I, I didn't want to interrupt him. Uh, I believe, um, if I understand it correctly, Sir, you, you own this property here? Is We're directly behind there. Directly behind you. Um, in this location here? Right there. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can we have him respond to the, each of the items that were brought up He's in the order? That. Yeah, the order that he brought them up. He wanted to know where. Right. No, yeah. that's fine. Thank you. Um, so. You want my piece of paper that has listed? <laughs> um, I think I, I have them all, but I'm, I'm sure you'll correct me if I've missed any. I'll bring it up, John. Um, so, so uh, I first the first comment had to do with um, excuse me the fire fire suppression mm -hmm. right we we've, we've uh, submitted plans to uh, the fire department they didn't feel that this facility needed to be uh, sprinkled uh, but that would be if if it did that would be done at the building permit process um, there is the water main out here that we could tie in if it was necessary. But again, that's a fire safety issue, and it's up to the discretion of the fire department uh, on whether or not it needs to be sprinkled. Typically, it's been our experience that a, a building over 10,000 square feet, although that's not necessarily a magic number, but typically is a building over 10,000 square feet would require fire suppression. Uh, but that's not always I don't the case. answer, please call. Um, so that's, that's what, you know, we that's why we presented the plans to the fire department and he didn't indicate that it needed to be fire <coughs> Uh Second question had to do with, a statement had to do with the uh, proposed light, which is in this location here. Uh, it's, it's 15 feet tall, it is down shielded. Uh, we've done the lighting analysis in the last sheet of the page, uh, and it really only illuminates this area here. Um, and uh, if Mr. Cole is in this location here, there is an earth berm here, and the light is in this location here. Uh, we did not propose any lights on the back of this building. There's, there's only a series of three lights on this building, and these, this building, and five on this side. So uh, I don't believe uh, our lighting analysis indicates that there's no uh, foot candles will be shown onto this property. Uh, thirdly, is the uh, erosion, uh, the stormwater management system. We again, we've provided calculations to the board that essentially does uh, fill in here. We've got a foot of freeboard, and again, we have the emergency spillway that goes this way. So based upon those, um, I do not, there's not anticipated any stormwater from going this direction towards Mr. Cole's property. Um, the regards to the cemetery, I know that there was a cemetery further down, which um, showed up on the original subdivision plan uh, from 1973, but that's on the other side of the hairdresser's lot, and so it has no bearing on this. Now, if there's a, if there's, if there's Mr. Cole's aware of a cemetery that's located on this property that I am not, 
for, then uh, you know we can look into it. But all the deed research that we've done uh, and our surveyors have done has not indicated that there was any cemetery that was here. It was two lots over, it was further down. Uh, in fact, very close to where White Mountain Survey Building is. There's nothing in the deeds or where it gives a right of way to that cemetery? It does not. No, no. I've read the deeds and there's no mention of a right of way to any cemetery. By law, they can't walk in the other But, but, but if, if we saw that there was a, something in the deed that would indicate that there was a, a right of way to a cemetery, then obviously we would look for the cemetery and know where it See, if there's no right of way, somebody wants to prove it, they give you a hard time, the slutman can go get the right of way by law. There is no, on the 13 map, there is no cemetery. There is no cemetery map, so if it's on behind cutting the uh, barber shop, that's nothing to do with this lot. It'd be a separate lot. It's a separate lot of record. Right there. Correct. Right. There's a fire hydrant right here. Yep. So. How deep is the filter media in the uh, retention pond? It's two feet thick. Okay. Um, and that maintains a foot and a half uh, separation above seasonal high water table, mm -hmm. which meets the uh, Department of uh, AOT, the Department of Environmental Services AOT regulations. Okay. So it, it comes into the first one, overfills into the larger one, and then if there's a maximum flow, it goes out the other way. That is right. Right. Okay. Where is the overflow that you're talking about? There's a whereabouts is it? It's between my house and, and Dolores Hobbies. Okay. There's a between. This lot in your lot, there's an area, there's a, thir what, a 13 feet? I think it's 13 feet because it's six and a half on either side. So the 13 foot area between our houses where we can't, where supposedly it was for storm drains. It can't be developed. I understand that. What I'm asking is, is it between yeah. your lot and this lot, or is it between? Lots in Arrowhead. I think it's between well, lots in Arrowhead. It's lots in Arrowhead. Yeah. But the storm drain right now comes off 16, which he's going to grade back towards my property, which is going to put more water down there, okay, yeah. between the two. No, he's putting the water to the other way. Right. In fact, by installing this stormwater management system, we're going to capture the water that's coming off of 16 and direct it away from your property, Mr. Cole, and towards their own property. So you're going to send it back to this property? It, no, so the, the stormwater management system basically starts at the end of that uh, uh, swale that was jurisdiction. It picks it up here, brings it around, allows it to infiltrate and settle here, and then anything that's overflows goes back over this way north, away from your property. Your property is here to the right. south. So essentially, by <coughs> installing this system as we're proposing, it should it should reduce the amount of water that's coming to your back corner here, not in not increase it. Could, could I mention a couple of things also? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. Cole, I'm John Pearson. I Actually, it's Perry. Perry, I'm sorry. His first name's Cole. Cole is your first oh, name. Got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the board, I did come before the board two or three months ago. You may recall and talked about this initial plan. Uh, we've done a lot of research on, on the actual business strategy as far as that's concerned. You know, there's a lot of turnover this time of year. Most facilities in the area are full. So as far as advertising for units, we probably always have some unit open, but you know we're confident that the market is strong and growing, um, as evidenced by other building in the area in the in the you know recent uh, recent past. 
as far as the lot itself, in a lot of ways, I think this is a significant improvement. I mean, what, what you know, Scott was just saying, in terms of, of the rainwater runoff, I think we're vastly improving the situation. I mean, right now, there's really, you know, there's a lot of water that I can see coming off of the adjacent property there, where kind of where the snow is, and it kind of just all heads down toward that, that old foundation and kind of goes back from there. And, uh, you know, now we're in that old foundation. Excuse me? Behind them, the well, right. So, so that's my point. We're going to get rid of that, which to me is somewhat of a hazard right now. I mean, it's it's. I've seen a couple of like, you know, it looks like bikes or kids or whatever have been back there. I think so. I think that's a an attractive nuisance right now. We're going to get rid of that. You know, the fence is more of a psychological deterrent. I mean, to your point, okay, somebody could climb it. We've got a fence there. We thought it would be nice to take advantage of it. You know, we're, we'd have to expand it somewhat, but by the fact that Fairpoint already spent some money, we thought it would make sense to take advantage. The lighting would be the most up to date, and it is, I think, even by regulation, I think it's it's down lighting. You know, so that's really just at the building. Um, what else was I thinking about? Well, when we looked at the plans, it looked as though the lighting was on the back of the building. Right. As right. opposed to the side, which, which is where you have so it. So I going over here, I thought. Yeah, no, I'd understand your concern. Yeah, we don't, and, and I mean, I guess we have that one on all the time, Scott. I'm not even sure, but I mean, it's, it's yeah, it would definitely just be for driving access. Um, well, that's the other thing. Do they have 24-hour access available? It would typically. I mean, realistically, you know, that would never happen, you know? I mean, I mean, I guess we could contractually restrict that with a gate, actually. We could restrict that. As a matter of fact, you know, I haven't talked to my partner about it. That might even behoove us, you know. I don't really have a problem with saying no to that. You know, assuming the gate and everything works, you know, that's, that's another option we could discuss. Um, I guess my bottom line is I think this is a significant improvement to the lot versus what else you might get. I mean, even Fairpoint with big equipment or somebody else, uh, you know, it's an industrial property. True. And you're the, we've been there for, what, 12 years now? Yeah. And with the exception of Fairpoint, that's the first time anything has been done with that piece of land. Right. And you're absolutely correct. It could be a lot worse. These are our concerns. Yes, well, and since that. we have the opportunity, we're going to take yeah. it yeah. to make sure. Yeah. And I guess part of it, particularly with the water, is like everyone else, I watched the news out of California and have family out there with, and they had mudslides. Yeah. And we, your land comes down and it comes down like this and then it comes down even farther and then bottoms out into our house. And then you're so going to it could, it further yeah, down so there. Yeah, so it could, yeah, it could. Yeah. We had visions of it coming down, right. so. I think we're, you know, putting a significant effort into the retention, so, I mean, that's part of the plans, which, you know, Scott can detail, but I guess that's my general summary. Even the fact of maybe eliminating the driveway, it's not, you know, it's not like people are just gonna pull in there if they're lost, you know? They would have to really search this place out, so. Just, you know, wanted to add a bit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, can I ask the engineer one more question? Carl, uh, how, how high above grade, uh, I should say above pavement, are the berms? Um, in other words, if you were driving down between the buildings in the evening with your headlights on, would the berms shield the headlights? Right, so you've got an 88 contour here, and the, um, this is 85. Oh, so, so they're three feet high? Correct. Okay. And how tall are the buildings? Um, they're, uh, at the eave height is like eight and a half feet, and at the, at the, like the entry level. Right. Again, it's a single slope, so the back here, I think, is, we're going with a one uh, half percent to one okay. uh, slope, uh, yeah. so it's not very tall, so. How far is their house from the edge of your pavement, approximately? Uh, so here, at a 20 scale, uh, probably, about the length of my pen, so about 90 feet, Mr. Barron. Any other questions? All right, we'll go on to the application for site plan review, which is not signed. I do not see the deeds. You got your packets, right? Yeah, it wasn't in, there was no deed in it. We may have only submitted one deed and not a deed for everybody. No, that would have been my, my mistake. 
What they had signed here, Mr. Scott? Which one's not signed? Application for site plan. What are you looking at, Scott? Uh, well, we, we, we both pull out a site plan application and they're, and they're signed. That one, this one isn't it. Which one is That's that the one, one I got. Special use has been signed. Yep. I don't know. Mine came back. No signature. No signature. Mine was signed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I stepped up on this one. Oh, okay. Just see if I see the chairman here. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. There it is. Yeah, it's signed. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> it was. Uh, I stand corrected. I mean, the coffee I got was not signed, yeah. so I'm not sure. He was a busy link. <laughs> uh oh, he's up to that trick again. <laughs> yeah. These Rochester guys are all bad. <laughs> I yeah, know, I went to school with this buddy. Oh. <laughs> Do I need to sign something? No, no, we, we, we right. seem to be okay. Oh, okay. Mr. Fair. Okay. Right. okay, reviewing them. They're greater than 10,000 square feet, correct? Yes, sir. Well, you're not more than 10,000. Well, one, one bill needs 10,000, the other one's 5,400. Okay. Mm -hmm. So total. You gotta check the major then. Oh, that the application is complete. I've seen the deed. Um, Let's see how it goes over the tax cards now. Everyone want to second the motion on the site plan the application second. of being complete. Second, second that. Okay. Good enough. Any questions on site plan? Well, if there's no questions, I move that we uh, have a vote. All those in favor? Motion carries. Can I make the motion first? I made it. Did. You made it. No. He seconded it. I made an app. The application for site plan review is complete. Yeah. Did you and make was, another motion to approve? No, I said I made the motion to approve that the site plan is. To accept it as is, a complete. As complete. Okay. Right. And I second Jimmy seconded it. All right. Yeah. Then a second hour. Roy, take your back. <laughs> Somebody. Try it again. Okay, so we're just doing the app at this point. Correct. Thank you. Special use permit application, I believe, is complete. Being in the water district. The reason that they have it. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to complete. I'll second. Made and second than anyone's questions on the application. No questions, all in favor? Motion carried. So they are both entered into it. Now we get down to the nitty gritty.
I'm not. I have a problem with the well and whether there's a leach field on that house foundation. That's my problem. And if there is a well there, it's got to be decommissioned. So you couldn't find it. Would that be town, town water and sewer there? No, I don't town know. Water, town water goes there. I don't know about sewer. I don't know no, sewer. No, no sewer. Yeah. Just the water. Was Just that, the water. Was that main in and active when the house was still on yeah. site? Well, that's question that, yeah. that came after. Yeah. When did the house burn? So I'm guessing they had water for town. They had water, but it was no good. Okay. It went to Hodgson Farm, where mm -hmm. Chambers is. Mm -hmm. And they replaced that four years ago now. And that house was never on that system. Right. On the new system, it's a six inch pipe. Could have been on the old system though. Maybe, but that's something that they're gonna have to find out. So you're suggesting there's there's potentially have, a well have, there. Mm -hmm. right. Right. I mean, I'm sure the applicant would agree that any well he finds would be dis decommissioned in any septic system that he happens to come upon during the uh, installation of this, he would uh, he could uh, remove and dispose of uh, in accordance with the DES. You're allowed to bury a septic system right next to right. the, the replacement, right. so, so that's not a problem. Yeah. The septic system no, is not, not a problem. The septic yeah. is not a problem, you know, except... Following the DES requirement. If, it's, a, if it's in the old pipe, it's going to be an old pipe and stone system. Yeah, and not. you're going to, if you've got a drain water through it, you got to eliminate that leach field. Right. So. You ain't, you ain't draining water through unless you disturb it. Oh, I mean, if he comes across it when he puts in his his drainage for his yeah. uh, retention for his retention. Well, they come the yeah. DES rules yeah. yeah. back yeah, that's in anyways. Yeah. Yeah. That's automatic DES rules. So I. So are you saying then, Connie, that we should probably have we should have con uh, conditions? That identify I believe that them they have a addressing that, that an existing well and an existing septic system drain that, field if it occurs. That they go to the water and sewer department and see if it was fed by the town mm -hmm. and what whether there was ever a leach field there. Yeah. Because the, you don't want the leach field. Yeah being in the way of the drainage. How old was the house? It was back into the, into the early 90s, isn't that? That built, you know, no one ever really lived in it. No, and then it burned. And it just fell apart. Well, so the leach field I don't even know if it was ever used. Yeah. As, as, if there is one there. If the so. leach field's installed, it was never used, it's not a problem anyway. No, that's you gotta, something they have you to check field out. They should yeah. check it out. Yeah. And your well may never got drilled, or it may have been town water. Right. <laughs> they may have never even gone that far. Right. That's yeah. we, whereas the applicant's not proposing to utilize either of the facilities, mm -hmm. he's more than agreeable to have them removed if he comes upon them. I mean, when he uncapped right. it, you're going to find you're going to either find a water pipe coming in and a sewer pipe going out. Oh, at the foundation. At the yeah. foundation. Absolutely, yeah. No. Yeah, I didn't see anything there. I haven't seen anything. I did also go to water and sewer about the other properties because those are confusing on their own. Um, yeah, but you don't have sewer. Right. Correct. Yeah. No, I did have uh, you the, have town water. the septic surveyed also yeah. on yeah. the other properties. Yeah, a lot of times they build the house, put the septic system afterwards, they just put a sleeve in the wall. Yeah. yeah. So what yeah. you want to do is look around, see if there's a uh, sleeve in the wall. And if you don't see one, just tap around, you know, about... Well, he know how high, but they could be a sleeve. You know, that got a little spent both sides of it, you'll hear a hollow. And if you do, it's never been put in. But well, quite honestly, if they when they start demolition of that foundation, they're going to find yeah. Absolutely. They something or not. They, they yes. <laughs> well, it yeah. depends how big the chunk out they'll find right. the hole. In right. right. And your hole is only six inches. That's true. Well, I, I did a lot of foundations where the fields never put into a year later. Mm -hmm. 
don't think that's going to be a problem. And you're proposing both the silt fence and the, uh, and the, um, I can't remember what Silt sock. Yeah, silt yeah. socks. Oh, yeah, on the, on the area between the development and the wet fence. And how about on the back of the lot? Uh, that was silt fence. Yeah. Where, yeah. Yep. So okay. one, one row of erosion and sedimentation control on these areas, but where we had the wetlands, we provided a double right. row of protection. Okay. The only issue I have in the only answer to a, a, a few He's minutes ago. He'll have some big fines. You're going you're gonna to have complete coverage of this place by camera. So if someone feels like dumping something that might affect the neighbors around with mm -hmm. paper or rubbish, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to identify those people and Correct. take action. That, that, that'd be the only concern. Well, let me show you the key card anyway. It's going to be <coughs> Will, will your uh, access system have uh, some kind of a log so you can go back in and confirm who has arrived at a certain yes, time? Yes, yes, it okay. links to the software. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, okay. It'll be a, a history to it. That's good. <coughs> I have no further questions. You've got to make up new plans, right? So sign these plans tonight. We make it on no. approval. No, it's going to be conditional anyway. Yeah. yeah. So that's conditional as possible. Such as possible. Well, the re revised plan. What else? Fire yeah. chief's letter. Mm -hmm. Fire chief's letter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he's changed his plans. That's right. Ms. Nash, did the, uh, the fire chief provide a letter? The first time around, he indicated to me on the phone he was going to, but I never saw a copy. I okay, I can follow up with him. Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay. okay, all right. But I'll obviously revise plans. We'll go through back to it again, absolutely. Just one of what? One pole mounted. And one then pole mounted. That's at the and that, that location is right here. Just outside your gate? Uh, yeah, it, on our property, but just on. on That'll yeah. be 15 feet high. That's correct. Yep. And then, and then the build, there's building mounted lights. There's five on this edge. There's three on this building and three on this building. And those are like staggered, so you get that sort of crisscross. Uh, and those Luminous. are down washing wall packs? That's correct. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, there's a detail on your on the right. last, the last page. Yeah, there's right. detail right. both. The only thing I have to, with that problem with that one is cold. Uh, there was some way you could move that last one on the back side. No, the other right there. Yep. Feet that 90 one. feet away, it's down with cast. You shouldn't cast more than 30 should, feet. Yeah. Right. Uh, I just, just be willing to work. Sure. He'd just be willing to work with coal. Yep. Yeah. In the notes, yeah. you know, yeah. in case it does fall. Yeah, I got a problem with the, the, the lighting as long as it doesn't. Yeah. The problem I've got is the control. Okay. But like, like I asked him, it's 24 hour access. Well, that's going to be addressed. And you only got a five foot chain link fence there for your security. Also, you're talking about trash. Okay. Well, when they clean out a locker, they can sure as hell throw it over a five foot fence. Just as easy as they can put it in a dumpster. <laughs> the security cameras will probably be caught. I was going to say, if he gets the security They don't care. They're leaving. <laughs> They're moving out. <laughs> uh, uh, they can be prosecuted. If you rob a bank and leave it, they can still come after you because the security cameras identified you. So if the security cameras identify you with the storage area, they can come after you. It's a deterrent. Anything else anybody can think of? Scott, I did not get it. Okay. Let it go to the fire. Oh, I'll follow. Okay. 
I spoke to the chief. He's all set with that. I guess I get these all straight. One is uh, to make sure there's no soil water. Right. I can see on that. Well, we still got to go over the waiver. Right. And, right. Uh, because it's been some changes to go through the fire department again. Okay. Case number 181S PR uh, 1314 16 LLC is requesting a waiver request for no on site parking as proposed. Okay, want to make a motion? Who are you looking at now? Hmm. The agenda. Oh, right there. There, there. there it is. There it is. So they're looking to. Uh, I, I make a motion that we accept the waiver, yeah. um, eliminating the requirement for on site parking. Scott, do you know what? Wait a second, second. no on site parking. And we had no on site parking for the poles, for the company power company, what that was. So, yeah, I'll second the motion. Do you know which one it was? <laughs> which one? Uh, the, what section? Yeah. You've got three of them here. I did, yes. 8.01.2.B. Yeah, 8. 8. 8. B. 8.01.2.C. And. 8.02C. We have to identify them right. yep. Yep. for the waiver. Right, so 8.012B is the requirement for the no parking. 8.01.2B. 2B. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 802.2 must be later. Yeah. Yeah. Water is which what's got? Water is water and sewer. That's 80 eight point oh three point one. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Oh, 03.1. I don't have that one. We don't have that. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, I don't have that one either. Did you go three point one? Yeah. 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 Well, I sort of three point one. Yeah, but I mean this particular document. On, on the form. On these forms. Yeah, I don't have a form that identifies that, that fourth one. Yeah. yeah. Just saying an eight point oh three. I think I've, I've diagnosed the problem, Mr. Chairman, yeah. is on my letter narrative, which I submitted before I knew the town had these fancy waiver applications, so I, I put the, my waivers in a, in a form of a letter, at which point there was actually two sections under the parking, right. which is the 8.01.2.B right. and 801.2.C. Both of those have to do with the parking, parking. and parking design. Right. All right. Um, when my colleague submitted the revised applications to Ms. Nash, he uh, missed the decimal point. <laughs> and problem, the problem and, I'm having, Scott. And, um, and so we essentially have 
three forms here, three applications. And, but, you know, I guess technically there are four waivers that I'm requesting. And so the one that we missed had to deal with the sewer, and the one that we, we provided to the two for the parking, and one for trash. That's my letter narrative, okay. and that was what we submitted originally. Uh, eight, eight point oh three point one. Oh, man. one. Yeah, that's Yeah, I'll take it's water and trash. Uh, waste of trash. Right. And you have this one. And you have 801-2B. And you'll see it's parking. Yeah. Okay. I got it now. Yeah. Your hat is confused. Right? I, I, I was confused as well. Um, join the club. <laughs> 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 I will. Discussion with my uh, colleague about this. Uh, but that's long story short. Right. Said the parking had two numbers associated with it: B and C. And waste. I make a motion that we approve the waiver request for no stop on-site parking as proposed on their site plan. Yeah, Eight point oh one point two point uh, point B. 8.01.2 C. Excuse me, right, Chairman. Do we have to withdraw our? Yeah, I will re withdraw my previous uh, motion. Motion. I'll withdraw mine. Right. Yeah. We have a motion on the floor, remember? Yes, but yes. the motion was not acceptable right. because but we still did not withdraw it. Mm -hmm. Right. We didn't Correct. have the references to the different Correct. sections. So you just made the motion. Yes. I made a motion to accept the waiver request. Or no on-site parking under 8.01.2 B, 8.01.2 C. So, discussion. No discussion. Call for a vote. All those in favor. Motion carries. Water and sewer. Water and sewer is 8.03.1 sewer disposal. Mm -hmm. At which point it says uh, uh, site review requires the individual sewer disposal systems and or water systems be shown on the applicant's plan. Make a motion that the waiver request for no water supply According to 8.03.1, so it is for oh. oh, that's not right. But I would say yes, and it would be right because it's C, 8.03.1.C, water. All those in favor? Motion carries. Waiver request for no separate system according to 8.03.1C. Make that motion. Second. And second in discussion. All those in favor? Waste disposal. You know which one that is? Any chance? 802.c. Waste and trash. Right. 802.2. Yeah, the waste disposal or sewage disposal? It says waste, waste, waste and trash. Thank you. Make a motion that the waiver request for no disposal, waste disposal of 
section 8.02.C be granted. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Motion carries. You have all your waivers, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Special use? Uh, Special use? Yep. Yeah. You uh, want to make the motions, gentlemen? We well, use the motion for special use to get it, but then we're going to read. Make a mo you have to make a motion for special use as being accepted. The application is accepted and uh, be granted. I make a motion that the special use permit application be granted. Second there. Hey, discussion. All those in favor? Motion carries. Now we come down to that nitty gritty gritty. This is where we vote them down? That, this is where we vote them down. Make a motion that we grant conditional approval for the site plan uh, case number 18.1 special use permit for site plan review yeah, what's the condition don't you? oh wait a minute we have one more site plan review uh, Allowing lot coverage of greater than 20%. That's a special use. That is a special use. Yeah. 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 That was the special use. Okay. Driveway permit is not required. <clears throat> and you are getting a CPG, correct? I'm sorry. You're getting a CPG. Yes, yes. The construction general permit is uh, noted on the plan to be required. And we stop ripping this off. No, I do what? Stop ripping it off. <laughs> there. Where did I go? Oh. Something. Made a conditional app, uh, approval for the site review. Conditions as follows. One, be determined that the water, whether it's well or town, and be um, taken care of in a safe manner. Two, sewage in the same. Find out whether there is a sewage on that lot or not. If there is, it'll have to be removed. I would like to restrict the hours of operation from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Is that agreeable? Can we ask for 9 p.m.? 9 you want? 9 p.m.? Would that be? That's fine. Okay. Hours of operation shall be 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. Letter know. from the fire chief. Mm -hmm. There will be no water and sewage added to the lot. Per their um, waiver, waivers and special use. And Connie, I have one more question. Maybe we want to consider this, and maybe not. Um, 
storage of any vehicles on site? We can't, store it. No, we can't tell them that. Okay. That's inside the structure. Well, I'm talking about outside the structure. No, outside the structure, it's already said there. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. A waiver is request for no on-site parking. Right, right, gotcha. Okay. No outside storage. Right. All right. That's my motion. Unless Second. somebody wants to add to it. Revised plans? Yeah, revised plans. We need a revised plan to add to that. Can't sign these. No, we can't. But that doesn't mean he he has to revise. Submit revised. He's going to submit the revised. Plan. Right. Submit the revised plans too. Yep. Withdraw your. And the letter from the fire chief. I already got. I'm sorry. T t t temporary withdrawal. <laughs> Federal, state, local. Federal, state, and local permits and regulations shall be followed. Go okay now. Yes. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Nope. You satisfied, sir? Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, uh, again, I just shared my phone number with our neighbors. I'm, I'm glad to keep in touch as far well, as that's concerned. I can't put that in the motion. <laughs> oh, in the motion, the motion itself. No, the motion, the hours. Um, Now's the time to complain before we, before we vote. The only thing I guess I didn't understand was the septic, right? Because... Roy, I think you said we could just bury it essentially, so yeah, it's. You gotta see if it's unless, it runs, unless it runs through your drainage. If you, if you, if you, if you come. Then if you, you're gonna defeat your drainage. Okay. If, if you right. find it with your drainage area, yeah. you, you got it disposed of. If you don't run across it, you're okay. I'll be shocked if we find one. Yeah, well, well, fact, understood. But yeah. My understanding is. the house there, and you're taking that foundation up. up. Right. There's a question. My understanding is that was around 1990. He should have a file up yeah. in his office whether it's one there or not. Right. No, not, not necessarily. But they can't find a lot of them. Yeah, I don't see a problem. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Any, uh, right. oh, Any other discussion? Nope. All those in favor of conditional? Everyone signed. All done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I made a mistake. We're supposed to vote that down. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> thank you. Now, I, will make a, I will make a suggestion that you two work it up. Yeah. I can't put that in the motion, but I can ask you very, you know, yeah. to do it. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. There's a lot of black sheep on the so we have the open roads we had the application at the signature. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 It's going to be better with what what what's there now. Yeah. 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 Well, so there, oh, uh, Jason Pollock is actually a partner right on the other side. side. So oh, there, is, there is somebody up there. I got to beat the new scale on that. Yeah, yeah. 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 No yeah. It's, it's a small okay. apartment. Okay. Let's get out of here, gentlemen. Stevie wants to go home. Any other, any other business? Mm -hmm. Old business. Thank you very much, Scott, for coming in. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. Yeah. Very easy call. I don't think your answer machine's working because I called you never returned the call. Oh, we can have two weeks ago. All right. All right. There was a call that I deleted before I even know who it was. Probably me. Okay, thank you. It was, thank it was you. a voice, and then that was it. And I'm like, yeah. I'm hoping it called back. I know I got one from here to call me. I'm going to call Rick for it today. Any problem? I'll call you tomorrow. 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 I'll call you we're just still waiting for the the We're waiting for Mr. Sega. 
to stop with the town out of town businesses and do us. Right, right. That'll never happen. But is it, it, it has it actually gone to No, it has not gone okay. to court yet. Okay. As far as I know. Right. That was the last word I heard. Okay. The original judge must be dead and buried for almost 10 years. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Case number 18-2B for Stephen Ingram was granted and yep. the one that hurts is case number 18 that's one motion for rehearing 55 Main Street Ossipi LLC 56. excuse me 56 that 92 lot 122 has been granted a motion for rehearing which one's that? That is the alcohol and over here. rehab. The Ospie Granite Recovery Center. Granite Recovery. Well, how, thank you. Uh, Granted a motion for rehearing. It will be on March 15th. Well, uh, how did they vote on that? It was shot okay. down. Three, to, three, four, and two against. No, we do have mm -hmm. they didn't have the duck. They didn't have the ducks in a row. Who I heard. No, they went down through the every variance, and all you have to do is flunk one out of the five, and you can't give it to them. Right. And Jim came in with paperwork from two different realtors saying that. Oh, it, the original hearing. Yeah. Yeah, the original hearing was three, three to two, two to not. Right. It's not grand. The motion for rehearing was unanimous. Right. Mister, Mister, Mister. Cody Foster. <laughs> you forgot my name. I ain't never forgot your name, boy. <laughs> not the one he uses when you're not around here. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> I ain't never forgot your name. <laughs> what do you got to report to us this week? Nothing at all. What do you got to ask me? Osby Grill. Osby Grill. That's in the boards. That's the EBA. I took that above, uh, I took it to the ZBA. You took it to the ZBA? Yeah, I did. And I'll be coming back to you, eventually. And the reason for taking it to ZBA? Oh, yeah, plenty of reasons taking it to the ZBA. The structures are just too close to the road. It should have never been built. And that's what we're working on. So he's willing to talk to Mr. Ouellette. He's got no problem going to the ZBA. It's just make everything right. Well, I mean, I, I don't. He's going to have to get a variance, right? That, he, he never moved his building. It should have never been built, that building. Oh, the, he never moved his original building. Uh, I don't know. Z's been there forever. Z's has been there since I was yeah, a right. kid. We're I talking can't. about the new 20 by 40 structure we built. Yes, but the, if he falls in line with the other building, doesn't. Another building. The existing building. Never mind. I'm the ZBA will take care of it. And then it'll come to us and then it'll come to you. The and then you can do your site plan, whatever you gotta do. I don't know what we gotta do because number two, I have two questions. Okay. Number one, what consists of a fence? I would like a legal definition of that. Okay. Right. Because you cannot put a fence up without a post. Right. <coughs> because it can't. There's no such thing as a. The only fence you can put up is ones that are wrapped. Right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even going to go there. If well, you want, if you want to go to ask Big Sag that question. The way I'm looking at it, it's under six feet. It's not a structure unless it's attached oh, to the building. See, it is attached to the building. It is attached to the building. He'll separate it from the building. It will not be a structure. But the question still remains, like you said, Connie, yeah. does the post at seven feet or six foot four or whatever does that violate count? our ordinance? Correct. And that's a good question to have our attorney tell us. I, this house is getting so dead it ain't funny. Thank you. Well, well no, I'm just, I'm just no, saying that that's I mean, just to clarify what Connie was saying. I, I'm trying to clarify. It says in there, eight fence, greater than six foot. Right. 
is a post. Your post what, is always it? higher than your fence. He'll so cut the post down. The fence. He will cut the post down. Oh, He'll do what it takes. It will not be a structure. And, and it will be it will be detached from the building that attached to it. And Connie, what was your other concern? Did it have to do with the 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 new building that he built? The clamshell. Oh, the clamshell. That's right. You know, I don't know what he's going to come to us for, a, but that building is not permanent, is it? Which one? Yeah, that's a permanent building. The one he just built, the 20 by 40. Was that built on a foundation? It's on sawtooth, I believe, or slab. It's on that slab. Sawtooth, wasn't it? No, it's on slab. Is it slab? Yeah, because I thought it was proposed sawtooth originally. It's on a permanent site foundation. I think he still has to come for site plan review. Yeah. Uh -huh. I th he still has to come for a site plan review. Oh, and he knows that. Yeah, because if he's going to have any kind of entertainment there, it falls under. Well, not only that, as Connie pointed out during our last discussion about this, that he has, we have to see parking issues that are accommodated. Um, um, he's, said, he's met all the time. Right, right, right. I know that. I think it was. I think it was parking, and there was something else we talked about. I don't well, remember I mean, we, the biggest discussion we had was that this is greater than six foot. Right, right. Then it's a structure we have no control over. It. No, no. And and that's why I I have asked and asked, and I will have to put it to the attorney mm -hmm. and find out for sure. I think because it's part of our ordinance. Well, right. I think that's the right way to go because then we have a clear definition of, of yeah, what that yeah, is. Yeah, so Sutton gave, gave you that I am expression. I music here. Use it. No matter what, it's still one person or a hundred people. Otherwise, I think we don't have to wait until it's for the board for it discusses any further when he comes back. Right. Right. We're not discussing his no. per se. We're discussing. I know we're discussing, but I think we need to get right. Time to go home. Discussing <laughs> ordinances. Well, the other business. Anything, Steve? Oh. Not yet. Uh, Chief Huddleston's waiting. Uh, he's going to get a letter to you for the Verizon. Yeah. He's been on vacation. He's back. He's aware of it. He just hasn't. Or maybe he has it already. I haven't spoke with him. Yesterday was a holiday. Before he was on vacation. So. Next week, you should have it. All right. So we should have it in March, uh, six. You should have it, yeah. Okay. Good. Everybody's all registered to vote next month? Mm-hmm. Do we I'll be back until we run against it? We got a vacant thing. No, that's not what I asked. <laughs> you asked if you were you registered to vote. Of yeah, course I'm registered to vote. All you have to do is be a resident to run. But to, to vote, you have to register to vote. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Yep. All those in favor of... Uh, get uh, get uh, the hell uh, out of here. Adjourn. I second the motion. Make a motion that we... Adjourn. Adjourn. Second in. No, oh, favor. Favor. All right. I meet the candidates tonight, too. I don't yeah. know what night that is. Next week, right? Yeah, next week. Yeah. yeah. yeah.